Voice of San Diego podcasts are made possible in part by Downtown San Diego Partnership, a member-based nonprofit organization that's the leading advocate for the economic vitality and growth of downtown San Diego. Resolutions are so last year. 2018 is about setting intentions, and there's no better place to set your intention than in a yoga class under the clear blue San Diego sky. Join the Downtown Partnership and Yoga One for free yoga classes this month, brought to you by Scripps Health, Saturdays at 9 a.m. in downtown San Diego's Pantoya Park. Visit downtownsandiego.org today to sign up. Location, location, location. It's a cliche for a reason. A location can make or break any business, but they're especially pivotal and risky for farmers markets. Veteran farmers market guru Brian Beavers is all too familiar. Location is everything. And if you don't have a good location, you could move 10 feet over and you'd have the best business in the world, 10 feet the other way, and you have the worst business in the world. Welcome to I Made It in San Diego, Voice of San Diego's podcast about the stories behind the region's businesses, the big and the small, and the people who made them what they are. I'm Lisa Halverstadt, and in this week's show, we're talking to Brian Beavers, who's made a living running several farmer's markets in San Diego. farmer's market, you probably think about fresh produce, delicious sweet treats, and handcrafted goods. For Brian Beavers, supplying those things has been the easy part. Finding and holding on to a good location has been more difficult. He's learned the hard way how crucial it is. We got basil, don't we? Yeah. And we have heirloom, and we have cilantro. Brian Beavers grew up just like you'd expect of a future farmer's market guru. He grew up on an almond and walnut farm in Central California and spent a lot of time at farmer's markets, but never thought of running one. Then, about 10 years ago, his former partner heard about a job opening to run the farmer's market in City Heights. And um, I applied and I got the position and the rest is kind of history on that in the sense that I basically fell in love with the idea of running farmer's markets and making them happen. Within a few years, Beavers was helping to run three farmer's markets. It wasn't enough to pay the bills. But by 2010, he decided he could make it work on his own. He didn't get much encouragement at first. I would go talk to managers as kind of like a a friend. I'd be like, hey, you know, I'm thinking about starting a farmer's market. And I was told numerous times, like, you'll never do it. It'll never work for you. You should stop doing it right now. But Beavers pressed on. He kept asking questions and started scoping out potential locations. He eventually approached a contact at Westfield Mission Valley about having a market in their parking lot, thinking it'd be an ideal spot. They were interested and started working on a plan. Beavers immediately started thinking about how he'd cover his more than $2,000 rent payment. He did the math and then hit the pavement. He decided he'd need to get guarantees from vendors that they'd participate in his market and have them put up deposits that would help cover his bills. I literally, for three months, went to different markets and collected business cards and made calls and talked to people. And, um, and fortunately, I was a convincing person. I, I convinced them. I was able to say, hey, you know, we're going to do some great things with this market. And uh, they, they were willing to give it a shot. 80 vendors ultimately agreed to give Beavers a $200 deposit to guarantee they'd be at his Mission Valley market for eight weeks. It helped him get started. Once those deals were in place, Beavers focused on getting customers to come. That took a lot of work, too. I personally handed out around 15,000 flyers throughout the neighborhood of uh, Mission Valley, all the apartments in the area. Um, I took out ads in uh, multiple magazines, um, and I did a lot of marketing um, before the market opened. And um, when I opened, it was, it was a pretty good success. I mean, we had 80 vendors out there. And we had uh, a ton of people that came through. Um, For the first year, that market was a decent market. The first year was rough. 
Money wasn't always flowing freely. A friend visiting his house one day noticed Beaver's checkbook sitting on the table. He had just $30 in his account and had gone out on the town the night before. She was worried about how he'd pay the bills. And I was like, well, um, I have faith that it'll come really soon. <laughs> um, but then within within a week, I was able to uh, to have all the farmers and all the uh, vendors, they all gave a $200 deposit and I had 80 vendors do that. Remember what we said about location, location, location? That lesson started to kick in around this point. The Mission Valley market would move from place to place. Sometimes customers couldn't find it. The mall would would move us to different locations in the parking lot. So sometimes we'd be on one side of the mall and, and the next week we'd be on the other side of the mall. And we lost our customer base because of that. Because they would, the mall's so big that you just don't know where, if you come to a particular location, people aren't going to go to the other side of the mall looking for the market. So they just assumed we were closed. And um, eventually that that kind of uh, sealed the deal. Beavers had to close the market after two years. Then he opened another market at Liberty Station, which wasn't exactly the hopping place it is today. Things went okay for a few months. Then everyone forgot about it or couldn't find it in the first place. I think that the True Value Hardware was really one of the only places there at the time. And, um, and we were located, they put us way in the back. Um, so you, you couldn't see it from the road. You couldn't see it from any main main thoroughfare anywhere. So you would have to know that the market was there, which is one of the biggest no-nos about setting up a market. You always want to put a market where people can see it. And um, so it was a challenge at first. Beavers decided he had to find another location. The market couldn't survive in Liberty Station. All those location issues were creeping up on Beavers, and they would continue to. When we come back, how beavers coped. This podcast is sponsored in part by a proud supporter of Monarch Schools and Make-A-Wish San Diego. Monarch School educates students impacted by homelessness and helps them develop hope for a future with the necessary skills and experience for personal success. Make-A-Wish San Diego grants wishes to children with life-threatening medical conditions to enrich the human experience with hope, strength, and joy. To learn more about how you can get involved, please visit monarchschools.org and sandiego.wish.org. Hey, welcome back to I Made It in San Diego. I'm Lisa Halverstadt. Where we last left off, Brian Beavers was worrying about his Point Loma Farmer's Market. It was the latest location issue he'd have, and it wouldn't be the last. Here's how he kept it alive. I did a lot of scouting, and um, I went over to the... uh, village which is uh, on canyon road right off of rosecrans and i talked to every business on that um, on that road um, well all the businesses that i could get in touch with there were a couple of them that i tried and i never was able to get in touch with them um, and i pretty much got letters of support from all of them and i went to the point loma business association i believe it is and um, they were able to grant me um, a letter of recommendation and I took that to the city and the city approved the permit and then we opened the market there and we moved it. Then Beavers came across a new opportunity in University City too. He had inked another partnership with Westfield, which owned the mall. It was an immediate success and the biggest success Beavers had had up to this point. A major key to that success was the UTC market's great location. That crowd was ripe for a market. They really, really wanted a farmer's market. And so that made it a lot easier too because they would share it with their friends and their friends would share it with their friends and then you have this almost like word of mouth marketing. Around this time, in 2010, Beavers was holding down another job working 30 hours a week at Starbucks. He was running ragged, but he was buoyed by the success of his UTC farmer's market. It eventually did so well, he was able to open a fourth market in Golden Hill and quit his job at Starbucks. Then came those location challenges again. You know, you build this market up and, you know, at that point it was my best market and it was it was the market that was 
that I could literally say, okay, I'm actually making a living doing this. <laughs> and, uh, and then they, you know, then they come and crush it. At one point, the UTC market went dark for four months. Beavers could only apologize to vendors and customers. The market, his most successful one, would move three more times before it finally closed in late 2016, from the mall to an area behind a nearby elementary school and then to Regents Road. Then things finally fell apart, and Beavers remained suspicious about the reasons. From what I was told was that there was uh, an issue with... uh, with uh, uh, ADA accessibility to the market, which didn't really make a lot of sense to me because we were literally in the parking lot so people could park right next to us. Beavers had to lay off a few workers and break the news to vendors. It was devastating. And that was tough because, you know, I I pride myself on hiring people and paying them well um, or trying to pay them well. You know, oftentimes I want to pay them more, but we have to work with a budget. So um, not only do I lose, like, possibly employees... I lose, like these vendors lose a place that they come and they they literally make their money for their business too. So it's not just one job that's lost. It's sometimes 50 if you have 50 vendors when a market closes. What Beavers didn't know at the time is that he'd find a new location in Claremont. And there was another opportunity too. It's also had its share of location issues. In 2013, Beavers opened a store called Simply Local at Seaport Village downtown. It's basically like an indoor farmer's market packed with local crafts, artwork, and other goods. And it was a big success. Then Beavers got some bad news. His landlord wanted to hike his rent. Later, he learned there'd be a big construction project that would disrupt business. Beavers started looking for another location. This wasn't new to him, but he got lucky on a night out on University Avenue in North Park. I was out eating in North Park one night and I just walked by a shop that was for rent and I called and it just so happened at 6.30 in the evening, they answered and we set an appointment that week and I signed papers like within a couple days. And so it was, it was fast, but I knew it was the right decision. I just knew in my gut that it was the right place to be. Nearly four years later, Beaver's Seaport Village store has closed. His North Park one's still going strong. And he's running markets in Claremont, Sarah Mesa, and at Horton Plaza. He's looking at new locations. But now, he's already predicting moves. And I've always kind of known that I am at the mercy of the landowners. And it's, it's something that you just have to kind of live with every day, that you just don't know for sure when somebody just might pull the plug on you. Thanks for listening to I Made It in San Diego. I wrote the show, Kinsey Moreland and Andrew Keats produced it, and Adam Greenfield mastered and mixed it. Visit voiceofsandiego.org slash podcast to learn more about our weekly Voice of San Diego political affairs show, our Good Schools for All education podcast, the Kept Faith sports podcast, Beer Talk Radio, and all the shows in the VOSD podcast network. If you liked this show, go to voiceofsandiego.org and click the donate button. Or, if you'd like to sponsor it, contact Kinsey at K-I-N-S-E-E at V-O-S-D dot O-R-G.